Welcome to The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. As a leading manifestation advisor with a process that's, well, radically different from the old New Age model, mine is rooted in psychology, neuroscience, and my energetic gifts. Therefore, I created this podcast to help you expand your subconscious limiting beliefs about the potential of deserving the manifestations you are calling in. In each episode, we'll walk through my expanders, a term in my manifestation formula signaling the people that already embody, have, or are successful in what we are looking to call in. These are the people that we witness through our mirror neurons on a subconscious level that expand us into knowing that our manifestations are possible as well. Especially when we hear about their background, their upbringing, their trials and tribulations, and any of their pitfalls that they had to experience along the way. Therefore, you're tuning into this podcast series to show your subconscious that anything you desire is possible. And by pressing play, you've already started the process of manifesting it. If you enjoy this episode, please leave us our review, comment, and share it with your fellow manifester that's struggling or could really benefit from the information that you're about to learn. talk about something purely energetic. We're always talking about the rock bottomer in here or the block. And I think at this time of year, it's actually really important to take a little bit of inventory. People can get pretty bluesy this time of year. And one reason why I can, and I've really pinpointed this energetic down, is that I kind of mourn old versions of myself. And I think that this time of year is a really clear time to take inventory. So if you've been manifesting with us for years now, or you started earlier this year, a lot of people came on with the Formula and Magnetism workshop last December. What I really want you to do this weekend is to take a little bit of inventory going back in your journal to just see all of the onion layers you've peeled off, literally everything about yourself you've unblocked because it's not unlikely that we can mourn these old versions of ourselves when we start to unblock really a lot of our limiting beliefs and what's not serving us we lose little pieces of ourselves what we're really losing are pieces of our ego but it's so important to connect back with those old versions of self so a lot of you have been DREing, doing the challenge with us, the daily reprogramming challenge for the last month. And we're taking it all the way to December 15th. So continue. If you aren't on it now, go ahead and jump on. But you can look back now already and start to see some serious layers you've been peeling back. And what can really happen before the new year is we can kind of mourn those versions of self. So an example for me is every holiday season, there's this one point in my life that I get bluesy about, that I kind of miss that old version of myself. It was the most messy version of myself. I was the brokest. I was partying a lot, but I was actually really free at the same time. Even though I didn't have tools to be in my worth and really be magnetic, I was having a wonderful time. I fell in love that holiday season. I partied a lot and that was really a good time, but I kind of always miss her at this time of year. And so I like to reconnect with her. One, in order to see how far I've come, but also two, to see what in my life right now am I being too militant on that I'm I'm missing little aspects of that version of myself so that I can start to loop those in to create a little bit more magnetism. So follow me here. When I look at my life right now, I'm so busy with work. I'm so dedicated to healing my body. You know, I've been really dedicated to bringing in a baby. So parts of me that I really need to bring in this new year are enjoying pleasures again. You know, because of my endocrine issues and all the stuff my body's been through, I haven't been 
able to enjoy things like chocolate or I can't really drink anymore. I can't eat sugar. <laughs> so it's really starting to bring in healthier alternatives of those so I can feel those feelings and have that pleasure in my life. Pleasure and desire are really big, important energetic and manifestation when we're projecting those things. So I encourage you to look at A, those onion layers you've peeled back. B, if you're having feelings come up where you're feeling a little like you miss old versions of yourself or you're sad and depressed because those versions of you are dying off. It's an ego die off. What I want you to look at rather than going back into those maybe bad habits or low self-worth, you know, that's something you'll go through and up level is I want you to look at what elements of those points in your life are you needing to loop back into your life right now in order to project a little bit more authentic magnetism. So not falling back into the old habits and the things that didn't serve you, but just kind of lacing in the energetics of what you're needing in order to be whole. And if you're someone who is feeling pretty magnetic, you are going to love Up Level because we have a whole workshop in there for you of how to tailor down your life and get a lot more specific about how to pump your magnetism up from worth into deservingness and tapping into your true authentic code. So that'll be really exciting. And then really look out too, because we have some great content coming out on the blog all about this season and what to be doing with this season and working with the energetics of it. So make sure to tune in on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Now let's talk about our guest today, Marta Sofer. I've been hearing about Marta for years now. I want to say six years. She is the go-to Ayurvedic spa, Surya Spa, that everybody goes to. Um, every celebrity, every person in wellness I know. I've known women who have gotten their cycles back from working with her, who have gotten pregnant, who have balanced out their hormones. You know, so I'm always hearing about Marta and how profound she's been for people in their life, their healing journey, just being balanced, being able to deal with Los Angeles. So I think you'll really identify with her story today if A, you're looking to pick up Ayurvedic tips, B, if you're Latino or Latina and you are looking to be expanded on how to kind of listen to the pings, follow your dreams, even if you're looking to transplant to a different country, you will love her story how basically TM took her everywhere where she is now. And she's so expansive, so beautiful. She, I love that she doesn't have any fluff. She cuts the bullshit and she gets right to it. So kick back, enjoy this. I'm so excited for you to learn from her. Welcome to the Expanded Podcast with Marta Sofer. And she is the founder of Surdia Spa. She is the go-to person from any of my celebrity clients to people I know in Los Angeles, um, all sexes, all ages. You are the Pachacarma person. <laughs> so I want you to talk a little bit about what you specialize in at the spa. Also, the bread. <laughs> Everybody eats the bread because you you guys have a cafe there as well. Yeah, I can. No, we don't have a cafe, but. We do prepare the food for everybody that comes into Panchakarma. So probably most people don't know what it is Panchakarma. What is this thing that she's talking about? Uh, first of all, I wanted to tell a little bit of story. Maybe this will be interesting of how uh, Ayurveda came to my life. Mm. And it's just so amazing. Uh, and and anytime I go to different classes or I go to any other teachers or vajas, which is uh, Ayurvedic doctors, they also express the same thing and the same thing I've been feeling because I've been doing this almost for 30 years now. Wow. So it is how Ayurveda comes and look for you. And when it comes to look for you, then it just takes over. Uh, which is in different many ways because Ayurveda not only is the physical way, is the spiritual way, intellectual way, a uh, lifestyle way. Oh. Uh, uh, we have the Jyotish, which is the astrology way also. Uh, so it's a total lifestyle change that you have when you get Ayurveda into your life. So when I, I was starting computer science and I was, uh, my heart was broken and a friend of my family said, maybe Marta want to learn TM. Mm. And I was like, oh, the, when my mom told me, like, what is that? Some weird American cult thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just figure it out. And I went to the TM center and I learned TM. 
and my life totally changed. Yeah. Then three months after that, that actually was October 28, 1988. Wow. So we I, are on the anniversary. Yes. Wow. That I learned TM. Wow. Uh, literally three months later, I was in Iowa uh, at the Maharishi School. Mm. Uh, I was going to continue doing computers, but then that didn't work out because life had something else for me. <laughs> as always. Uh, so I had to do English as a second language. Because English was good, but not so good enough to be in a in the computer program that I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So I was sitting in the dining room, which and we were having lunch, and then this person comes, sits next to me, and she was like slick with oil. And she looked so amazingly mm-hmm. peaceful mm-hmm. and so radiant. And then I just started talking to her, and she started talking to me about Panchakarma and Ayurveda. And even thought that I'd been in school for already two years, Mm -hmm. no, a year and a half. And I had no idea how profound was this. So then I applied to the program. I said, I got to learn this. Not because I was thinking to work on it. Because I was, in my head, I was continuing Mm -hmm. with computers. So I decided to apply to the program and I got accepted. And then Ayurveda came to my life. Mm I'm probably going to share some things about my physical uh, state of that time when I, things that most people take for granted and I still see it today in my practice. For me, it was okay to go to the bathroom mm-hmm. one time a week or mm-hmm. two times a week. Wow. And wow. that was not something that I would think that just not mm-hmm. a normal thing, that it should happen every day. Yeah. Um, and then I was suffering with incredible headaches, like mm-hmm. really, really bad headaches. As soon as I learned TM, my headaches started to get better. Wow. Just, just merely to do in 20 minutes of meditation. Wow. Then after that, uh, then I started Ayurveda, and then I saw the doctor, and I started learning everything, and I was like, oh, you actually have to go to the bathroom. You're supposed to go every day, mm-hmm. not like <laughs> yeah. once or twice a week, and that's probably what the reason why all these things are happening to me. Yeah. So... That was one of the major changes that, first of all, spiritually, uh, it, it just totally changed. Even thought that I was grow up in a Catholic um, family, mm-hmm. we go to and, and a Catholic school, mm-hmm. so there was a lot of religion and a lot of spiritual practices and stuff like that, and rituals, mm-hmm. which is very important. And I still do some of those, but more in Ayurveda mm-hmm. part of of it, not not so much of the other rituals, more of the Catholic religion, they do. Yeah. So learning Ayurveda, for me, learning about the food, the importance of that you eat this is going to affect your, your, your body in positive or negative way. So and nowadays that the food, especially in America, I will say, it's been so genetically modified. So and bad. so many pesticides and so many herbicides. It's very important that people do not take that for granted and try to eat organic as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I agree. So Ayurveda, uh, in all these ways, changed my life. And then I had, then I started working at the Maharishi clinic in, on Sunset. Uh, he had Maharishi, Ayurveda had like five different clinics. Um, and so I went to train some people during doing for six weeks Mm -hmm. and during those six weeks i met my husband roger wow (laughs) so he was at the maharishi school as well no he he used to go meditate oh wow he used to go meditate uh, every day at at seven in the morning and at five o'clock in the afternoon and so during those six six weeks six weeks we met um and then after that well (laughs) well he's here still today another story (laughs) (laughs) uh but uh, during those six weeks, then we start implementing. I, I helped the clinic to put a little bit of more of uh, computer stuff and doing more things to to be able to help to do more system systematization on that, and then uh, train all the girls in uh, in Ayurveda after I graduated from wow. Marishi. And then when Marishi closed the clinic, we I decided 
um, people keep calling me, can, can you just do Pancho Karma for me? Can... So then finally I opened up space in 2001. Wow. It was a little apartment with just one room, mm-hmm. uh, two rooms. And then I started doing Ayurveda and Pancho Karma there. Wow. So when we do the Pancho Karma, that's what we do uh, that's right your now. specialty uh, yeah right so panchakarma are different ways of detoxing the body so one of the ways that we were talking just previous we did this is, is sweating mm-hmm. so but it's not the sweating like going into an infrared box or going to a sauna or going to uh any place where it's enclosed ayurveda uh talks about being very important to have your head cool mm-hmm. while you're sweating so the head never should be hot. And the eyes really, too, And protect, right? and the eyes. Yeah. So that's one of the treatments that we do, sweating. Mm-hmm. And now with the infrared, having... I, I try to stay as much as possible into the traditional way, mm-hmm. but I also think because Ayurveda was basically cognized by the sages, it was like literally cognized by the totally. sages. What I'm, what I'm saying is like, all the solutions and all the things that came, they would just like Channel. download mm-hmm. to them. So I think the sweating was one of them, but there is another treatment called Shirodara, mm-hmm. which is, is really, whoever thought about that, it has to be something... From somewhere else. From, yeah, yeah, because who thought about putting, pouring oil in your forehead? And that much oil, I see it, and I'm like, that's so much oil. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to take you to a different state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And I have people that say, that say things, they see things, mm-hmm. they say that, after you have a treatment like that, you feel so different. Mm-hmm. You feel like all the stress has been like washed off mm-hmm. of your body. So it has to be something really special that, oh, you, yeah. that whoever recognizes that you put something in your head, like dripping in here, that that's going to take you to different states of consciousness. So incredible. So that's the Shirodara. Then we have the Abhyanga, which Abhyanga is... You guys, is again, another thing that is just so incredible. Have you ever had that? I do it daily and I've gone to, yeah, get them done as well. I always go to uh, Pratima when I'm in New York and now I have to always come to you when I'm in LA. (laughs) (laughs) But they're so important. And the herbs, I think, are what make them even more important, like specialized to the different doshas. Because it's one thing to just do it with the suggested oil, but when they're laced with the herbs, I mean, that's that takes you to a different space and a, a different energy not so much consciousness for me, but it's an entirely different grounding state for me. Yeah, just the fact that the two people are doing this, one one side, the other side, and they're just going completely synchronize, mm-hmm. doing the bianga on you. Uh, there's just like something so magical that happens again where you just like leave your body uh, if it's done the right way. Yeah. So that's what is very important. For me, it's very important to keep it to be done the right way. Oh, I love that. To make that. it slow, not fast. Yes. Because the minute that you put fast into something, like I, I, I explained something that it would be uh, talking. We were talking about vata before, which I always tell everyone. I'm just so vata. Even taking a shower, I can't just do it slow. <laughs> so oh, I can't ever slow down. So there's two, there's this is like something very simple, but people do not think about this. And vata, so everybody knows what vata means. Vata means movement. Mama, vata means air, cold. So. What I wanted to show you about this is like I can just go and let's say I can go from, I'm going to get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can go like this. Get That's it, me. And then <laughs> come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or I can, go, I can do this. I can just like go, get it. Slow. Come back. Conscious. Yeah. That little difference, mm-hmm. what it does to your nervous system and to your body is incredible. It would make the biggest difference for anybody who's listening and not able to watch what Marta was showing is oh, the difference between, <laughs> no, it's great, the difference between <laughs> rushing to grab something and then just slowly and consciously doing something to shift out of Vata, I assume. Yeah. So how you guys move, how you guys are in the car, like you have to go someplace, you're going to be late, just let it go. Because it's not good to put that into your nervous system. Yeah. It's not good to put that rush, rush, rush. Because the minute, especially with the phones and the stimulation, all the internet, everywhere. all the things that we have right now, we are just going, going, going all day. 
Absolutely. I practice Veda, um, TM, but Vedic, I learned it as well. And what my teacher was saying, what we experience in one day today is what we experienced in stimulation for our entire lives 200 years ago with everything that's at us constantly. And so I assume everybody has a Vata balance. Everyone. Or shifts into Vata constantly. Everyone. Everyone. I was in a class... uh, uh, this Sunday, actually, and it was a very emotional class for everyone. And there was an exercise where one person had to fo- follow the other person. But the person that was following the other person, it was actually very close to the other person. And this was making the person really not good because it was kind of, I don't like you to be so close to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this person was... It, but I was just talking. She was like, even though there was an exercise, she wasn't going anywhere. She was walking so fast mm. in the room. Wow. Then they said, who else wants to do it? So I said, I'll do it. And I did it with my daughter, mm-hmm. which is in the class also. And then I started walking. And that's what the first thing they noticed. is like, you're walking very slow mm. compared to the other yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. I said, you always walk like that. And then I said, when I don't, when I don't have to, I walk slowly. Wow! Oh, so that's just one thing everybody listening can implement right now. Yes. It's slowing as simple as that. Then just that already lifts your nervous system. But just just having your phone in your hands is vata. Agri. It is. It's so. It's true. Even me just seeing the light. It turns me into vata. It's a stimulation, which it, they show scientifically. It starts to, it's the same eliciting as drugs or any type of stimulation, a stimulant. But I really quickly want to go way back and I want to hear about your cultural upbringing. You're from Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to hear, yeah, tell us about just your life growing up, your family in a nutshell, what that was like. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever goes, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, um, I grew up, my family is very, very big. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother, uh, when I was little, she divorced my father. And then so my father went out the picture. Oh, wow. Uh, totally. Maybe one time I was playing outside with my brother and then this car stopped and there was a guy there. And then my brother went and talked to him and I was sent to my brother. My grandmother said to not talk to any strangers. Mm-hmm. And that was my father. Wow. <laughs> How old were you when that happened? I must have been like six years old. Wow. So he really was gone. Yeah, he, he, was, he was gone. Mm-hmm. So that was my grandpa. But my grandmother, which I adored, mm. um, she used to make all these things. She used to take marijuana mm-hmm. and then put it in jars. Mm-hmm. She had this, well, we had different farms. And then in the farms, she would have like the rose garden. Oh. And the farms in Colombia, they are more, since you've mm-hmm. been in Colombia, so you yeah. probably you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We have farms where are more recreational farms. Yeah. So where people on Fridays, they go drive to your farm. They go to the country. And they go to the country. The country and house. And yeah. Just like literally you go in the pool, you go horseback riding. Yeah. You, and yeah, sometimes we make, we actually, in our farm, we make more food for our family. Mm-hmm. So all everything the potatoes the tomatoes the roses the milk oh, the meat you did the corn and you did your own tortilla made from the yeah wow. made from the farm wow so that's the way i grew up okay. so very natural food and then all that food was put in a truck you know and then it will get to to bogota mm-hmm. where that food will be cooked for the family oh, for the whole wow. week Wow. Did you guys grow panela <laughs> and chia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You had it all. So my grandmother had these incredible gardens in the family, in the, in, the, in the farm. And they also, in our house, she had internal gardens. Wow. Like she will make this room and put glass and then it will make it into oh, wow. internal gardens. Oh and she gosh. will have all her flowers and herbs and stuff. So I, since I was very little, I saw her doing these things and she had arthritis so what she did is she would take the leaves put put it in the actually she would do this every full moon wow and then put that and then she will apply after a month of that being in the in the alcohol yeah. she will apply it into her arthritis wow and that helped her enormously so she was arthritis. already doing the uh, THC infusion and to use that for anti-inflammatory yes incredible so 
when my 20s mm-hmm. started to be more illegal mm-hmm. to do that. But in that time, it was just another plant. Yeah. It was not something that it was known as, as uh, people are starting to smoke it mm-hmm. kind of around in that time. So my grandmother, uh, also an amazing cook. Wow. So all my, all my aunts and my uncles, all of them, pretty much cook incredible wow the, the food that they that we make is and when you go to colombia people oh. the flavor of the food uh is really really good and it doesn't have to be because we use spicy food mm-hmm. it's the flavor yep. itself the way we combine uh, spices and and actually vegetables together and the markets are so important in colombia i feel because you just i mean anywhere like in south and central america the markets you don't like when you go to the actual old farmers markets and you go to get the chili and you go and get everything it's so magical and it was so incredible to see that you really see that 80 percent of the world literally still goes to herbal medicine first because you go to a colombian market along with going to get your groceries you walk to the herbs and they're all hanging and you go and you grab your herbs and what you need and everybody knows herbalism for the most part it seems yeah. or maybe it's losing now. no no just still, still like i was in colombia just three months ago and it was just really amazing i wanted to go to one of those things because i love going in there oh. and seeing it and also you see the all the plants that they use for like we call it the seven herbs mm, i don't know what that is so these seven herbs are like baths that you do to clean your aura the banyas. Is the, that what that is? Because Chloe, um, one of our great friends that's a healer, she, well, she grew up in Mexico, between Mexico and Europe, and she administers a lot of Mexican medicine. Mm-hmm. And so she talked about banyas that she banyas. does. Yeah. We don't, not much. But maybe, I mean, it's different. No, it's probably Colombia. the same thing. Yeah. Because it's Mexico, it's probably mm-hmm. the same thing. Probably the kind of very similar herbs very too. Similar, yeah. But that's something that we do. So. so what is yours? Do you take them still? That's so, or is it included in this or this is all Ayurvedic based? No, this is Ayurvedic. Yeah. This Ayurvedic. So what were those that you grew up with? I'm so curious. I've never heard of them. So what, what is so amazing. I wish I had pictures because it's so amazing. Wow. You see them, but you probably see them when you went to Colombia. Yeah. So you go to these little, little places like this little they're tiny boxes just herbs yep. everywhere hanging it's so amazing yeah. and then they have all herb, even dry herbs but mainly fresh herbs yeah. so you take all these seven herbs that, that we talked about yeah. and then we boil it to make an infusion to make an infusion like yeah. a big big infusion and the whole house smell, smells oh. incredible and then you go and take a bath with that wow then you take a shower and yeah. then you save some of it and then you you just pour it over your crown, over your crown to wow. just like get that infusion and that goodness from the plants oh. for you to help you in your life. Yes. So it's, I love that. What were the herbs that you guys used specifically growing up? Do you remember? I'm going to try to remember. Uh, because I know the names in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there is one we call it hierba buena, uh-huh. which means good herb. Oh, I love it. That's so beautiful. <laughs> uh, good herb. And then the, another one they call the Loki plant. Uh-huh. Uh, that is very similar to the mint. I love that they're, lo- they're good, lucky. <laughs> it's a real, like, it's a real, it's magic. Yeah. Wow. Uh, then we use oregano, mm-hmm. rosemary. There is the planta del ojo, mm-hmm. which means the eye plant. Wow. I am translating. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I'm following. Yeah, (laughs) it just doesn't work that way. (laughs) Translating that one is to protect you from bad eyes. So, but in a way, we call it bad eyes. But now that we understand what bad eyes means, is energy from other people that it could be negative. So that protects you from that. There is manto de Maria, which means the blanket of Mother Mary. Uh That is a little this white flowers that smell so so beautiful. And then you just put that in there. Uh, there's protection. two more. Yeah, protection, yeah. Mm. Basil is one of them. Wow. And there's one more. I, I'm going to Google. This sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. How special you grew up with that. Yeah. And then we have the Saumerius. 
it's like a, a thing like this, like they use it in the, actually they use that in the Catholic church. Oh yeah. And you see them going like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, you steam it essentially, or is it just, you do it for burn, incense? And then incense, you just have it. all the smoke coming, wow. all the smoke coming and then you do your house wow. um, like once or twice a month yeah. with these herbs. And to then cleanse you, it. Then just, to, just to clean <gasps> the energy in the house. Oh. So they sell all the different herbs and the little, it's like little things like this made out of charcoal. Uh huh. Like resin, kind of. No? It's like similar to what they have here, okay. but it's like it's more like a it looks like this, but smaller. Oh wow! And then the way it burns is quick, quicker than the ones they have here of charcoal. Yeah. yeah. And you put the herbs inside. Uh huh. Because the one here are it's flat. Yeah. Yeah. This ones you put the herb inside. Yeah. And then it starts burning on the outside. Wow. And then you do this. And, and then, then you the walk around house. your house. Yes. Oh, wow. Then, That's incredible. You grew up with so much <laughs> magic. Or I'm so happy you grew up in your culture too yeah. with your family. Yeah. What's your astrology, your Western sign? And then your I am Gemini. You are Gemini. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, and in, in uh, Vedic, yeah. in Vedic and yeah. astrology, I'm um, Aries. You're Aries. Aries wow. Sign. Both are the, the most magnetic signs yes. in manifestation. Yes. They just are the quickest manifestors. Yeah. Well, that takes me to the next question. How you manifested your move to the States? Well, meditation. Oh, wow. So that's what took you was to yes. go study. The minute I learned TM, literally three months later, I was able to sell my apartment, my house, my all my things, get the visa, even thought that I wasn't having too much help from my family to go because... Uh, uh, so actually... The boy, the my my mom's, the mom of my boyfriend, yeah, was the one that helped me with all the the account, the all the accounts in America to wow. support for me to come. Wow, it was it was like a miracle. See, so and then can you talk about just in a nutshell that breakup? Because I'm gonna lay out to them how manifestation works through that. Because it sounds like your heart was broken, and then she came in and helped, and you learned TM, and like everything moved out of your way. Well, <laughs> this, this is, it was really amazing because I. I'm in my apartment and I'm working for a huge company mm -hmm. in computers where I'm developing, I'm the head of the department of Senec um, and this is an engineering company that it was, we were having, making the software mm. to control the water wow. in Colombia. Mm -hmm. What happens in Colombia is that the poor people break the pipes to steal water, to okay. get yeah. water for their house. Mm -hmm. So, what we were trying to build, it was software that it will, it will kind of see where the pressure will go down. Mm -hmm. So then we'll know where the water was broken. Broken. Yeah. So that's what we were working on. Wow. So I was working for that. And that was in the 80s? Yes. Wow. Was that at the height of everything or that turned into the 90s when Columbia, the height of everything was no, going No, that on? was 88. 88, okay, that wow. Was a, I was working for that company between 87 and 88. Okay. Um, so at that point, I am with this boyfriend and then he just decides I had an apartment that is very unusual mm -hmm. because in Latin America, normally you don't leave your house until you're you married. Until you're married, yeah. yeah. You stay so home. like there's people that stay home, 30, yeah. 35, 40, yeah. they still live home, live at home with the parents. And mm -hmm. they're just normal. Like totally. all my nephews, mm -hmm. uh, my niece, they all live with the mom in the yeah. house to come with my brother. Yeah. The, or my family, there. my uncle's Iranian. It's Middle Eastern culture. Just, I think every, most other cultures than America and like continental Europe, everybody kind of still lives with the family. Yes. You know, it's beautiful. But you're Gemini. You're like, I'm out of there. <laughs> well, I had to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Too many, too many people. <laughs> I had to get out of there. The situation, I, after my grandmother divorced my grandfather, then I couldn't live with my grandmother anymore because I grew up with my grandmother. Yeah. I didn't grow up with my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was married again. Mm -hmm. She had two kids. When my grandmother got divorced, I had to go and live with my mom and her husband. Oh, wow. And then after a while, it just was not yeah. good. Then mm -hmm. I had to leave. And, and then I could afford to have my own place, so wow. I had my place. Anyway, he was there and he had some clothes and the keys. And then one day I come back from work and... Everything was gone and the key was there. No note, no nothing. My heart was totally broken. Totally. But this is to show you how yeah. life goes. Mm -hmm. During that time is when my family's friend talks to my mom about me learning TM mm -hmm. and about going to America, yep. coming to America. I learned TM. All that happens, I apply to the school. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm in a gas station, and then I'm putting gas in here, and then he comes in here. And then a truck comes here, and something, another truck here, that they were going to deliver gas, uh-huh. and we couldn't move. So I have to, we have to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we talk, and then by then I already had all yep. this going. Yeah. And then we came back. But you guys didn't get back together. Then we got back together. Well, and then what happened? <laughs> then he, one day he came, and then he said, there's this letter. And then he said, don't open it. Just throw it away. And I said, no, I want to see. Yeah. And it was the acceptance of the university. Wow. Oh, and then you came here. If he would, that would have not happened. Yeah. I would have said, no, I'm not going. <gasps> wow. Incredible. So it outlines manifestation <laughs> so well. I have to make a note for anybody who follows the work. So your heart's broken. I call those earthquake moments. Yeah, like quit. rock totally. bottom. Totally. It just <laughs> rips everything up from under you. And then the universe, I believe, comes in and goes, well, here's what you're supposed to be doing in life. Yes. <laughs> it like clears the way. And you know your mom's friend was a beautiful mentor. And you said, yes. So you accepted it. You got on your authentic path. And all of a sudden, things just start happening happening and going for you. But you know what always happens in manifestation? When somebody breaks your heart as they come back, or it's a test, it comes back to be like, do you accept this life, this authentic flow that you're on, or yeah. are you going to settle again? Yeah. And you accept it. Yeah. And now look, yeah. everything, it's incredible. Yeah. So I'm so happy for you. <laughs> and now you have a great husband. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to ask you some Ayurvedic questions and then I'm going to sprinkle in some personal stuff okay. along the way too. Mm-hmm. First, I want to get into, because we're really calling in all of our communities, right? I really want to support them deeper. And so we're calling it the wise, our 45 year olds and over who have kind of, you know, they've had their turns around the sun and they're going through menopause now. Um, and then we'll talk about our younger parents, but first, how the clinic in Ayurveda supports menopause and supports those transitions that people are going through in their lives. Okay, so menopause, first of all, we have to accept it, that that's what's happening. We're yeah. going to get older, uh, that skin is going to not be so tight and beautiful as it was before. There's not, a, not as much production of estrogen in mm-hmm. your body. All the hormones start, so you start kind of drying because... Mm-hmm. That's when I read, I would call it the wisdom time. Mm-hmm. So we have to look at it more in a, for the me. The wise, that's what I call like, them. Yeah, like yeah. the wisdom comes and it's just a different part of your life where you have to give to others. Mm-hmm. So this is what we have to do now. So when menopause comes, that transition, it's like you have to see it like a transition. So yes, it's not the easiest way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not easy. Sometimes when you get the, the hot flashes mm-hmm. and then I've seen women that come to the clinic and they are like, literally they have to have another shirt with mm-hmm. them in their, because they're their, sweating so much. In their purse mm-hmm. because they sweat so much mm-hmm. and it's just suddenly, we just can be talking and suddenly they get like mm-hmm. totally red and you can see the sweat coming here, the sweat coming here and even the sweat, it's like, when you go into menopause, you sweat in places that you never sweat. Mm-hmm. You sweat in your legs. Mm-hmm. You sweat in your... It's like, I don't know, I will say, if you feel like you're going to get sick and then you feel like you're sweating in places that you never sweat, mm-hmm. that's what happens to your yeah. body, but the whole body. Oh, man. It's because I've had that happen when just my hormones are off, when estrogen drops too quickly, when they've risen, and, it, and I've experienced where I wake up in my bed is just completely soaked. So I can't even imagine all day long going through that transition and yeah, well I better but, imagine <laughs> it's going to come one day no, soon <laughs> no because that's what is so beautiful about Ayurveda yeah. that it will prepare you for that yeah. and then it's just a simple so what happens when anything is a change with hormones your pita which mm-hmm. is pita means the fire in the body so the fire is going to go up in, in your so what happens you are now a days all the girls are starting to get their periods around 10 years yeah, old yeah. which is really sad uh normally when i when i got my period it was around 14 15 years yeah. old and that's where all my peers were getting 14, and now the hormones are all the food now it's 10 years old and again this comes from the food yeah. that just please be aware of this be aware of what you give to your kids yeah very very important so that time of life comes and then what happens heat comes yeah. again so the teenagers, you see their skin breaking out. Yep. And that's, again, heat that is produ- being produced in the body. It's so like a it's volcano. Just, like a volcano. Mm-hmm. So when you go to menopause, it's a kind of the same thing. 
But here, now we're going to, from heat to, to cold. Yeah. Because now we're going to vata, mm-hmm. which is the dryness. Mm-hmm. There's no more mens. Mm-hmm. There's no more period. That the, the, All the hormones are going to start to be... You're starting to dry everywhere. Your skin starts to dry. Your your collagen, your tightness in your food, all that is just more dryness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, the pita is coming up, and that's when the heat comes. But it's not that that's going to stay forever. Mm-hmm. It's a certain moment mm-hmm. of like when you have when you start to get at when you are fourteen, fifteen adolescence, it stops. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It stops yeah. because then you go to college and all these things already happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's done and it, your life, your body changes. Yep. So already you went to the change. So it's the same thing in menopause. Mm-hmm. So you already went to the change and then you go to this other part. Phase. Yeah. The other phase of your life where it's the bad and you cannot look at it as bad. Yeah, I, absolutely. I look at it yeah. as like, oh my God, I gain all these things. Now I get to give it to people. Yeah, and, and I don't have to have periods it. anymore, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for some people, not. <laughs> but no, all of this wisdom, truly, to hold space to be more. Because I like to say, in manifestation, at least, the wise when they are really in their worth, when they're really in their authenticity, and they've really shed all of the blocks that prevent them from feeling that. There's such a, there's so much magnetism and wisdom for someone there uh, to learn how to recalibrate the way we view that and harness it in a fully different way. There's so much power there. So I love that. And so how do you at the clinic support that transition? So one of the things is when the pita, because you didn't have the knowledge, because you don't know any of this and you just continue being your life, being aware of these things that ha- that they could be there for you or they haven't come to you because it's not your time, Yeah, which is Ayurveda comes when you are ready for it. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, yeah. So if you don't have that and then a person comes in that case then I'm like okay let's go and do panchakarma ah, okay let's bring the heat down mm-hmm. and balance your body so you don't have to be sweating at night mm-hmm. you don't have, then you can sleep at night because that was another thing gets very disturbed which is vata yeah again so the moving thinking thinking totally. the waking up every every hour two hours not being able to sleep when you before went to bed and got up you went to bed at 10 you got up at 6 yeah and you were fine no when you get to menopause, you're going to be waking up at one. I mean, I do two, that now. At four. <laughs> <I'm Yeah. not. laughs> so this is what, because the hormones are changing. Yeah. So if you really learn that you take food that is not going to aggravate that. Yeah. So the food is the main thing. Okay. That, for someone that, going that, or that. lifestyle things. Don't go to a sauna mm-hmm. because that's going to create more internal heat. Mm-hmm. Don't go to an infrared even though they're really good unless you do very little time and you sweat Mm -hmm. more to detox, Mm -hmm. sweat and be done. But even when you have too much pita, when it's like that, you try to avoid things that will create heat. Yeah, even in the food is a big thing. So on the food, and and it's very important to always be aware of this. So in this this point of of life, uh, you do the pita pacifying diet. Mm-hmm. So the pita pacifying diet is to do everything that it will create the coolness in your body. Mm-hmm. So like things that are acidic, acidic is going to produce heat. Yeah. Uh, like simple as tomatoes, mm-hmm. potatoes, mm-hmm. eggplant, All bell the peppers, shades, huh? strawberries, okay. blackberries, sour things. Mm-hmm. It's going to create heat in the body. Spicy food. Mm-hmm. Totally, yeah. That is a very, very important thing. Mm-hmm. So if you are in menopause, do not eat anything spicy. Mm-hmm. Alcohol, mm-hmm. wine, even if it's just like one or two cups of wine, it's just, it will create the heat in your body. It's like, think about it. You put it inside, you feel the burning mm-hmm. going down here. Mm-hmm. Especially one person that doesn't drink, the first time you drink, you feel it going totally. down and burning. Yeah, it's so acidic. Yeah. yeah so if I take a glass of wine, and this fireplace will go on, is, mm-hmm. is on, and I throw it into the fire, what happens? Yeah, it gets higher, it gets more heat. <laughs> I love that analogy. That's something great to think about for anybody. What, what you toss on a fire, what will make it burn more? Yes. You know, what will cool it more? Yes. Yeah, I love that. That's so, a great way to think of it. During that time of the menopause, then just do that. Mm-hmm. Just, just do that. And now, uh, what Ayurveda and TCM have have learn about transdermal stuff for 
years. Mm -hmm. Now Western medicine caught up to us and mm -hmm. now they do all the patches and stuff. Yeah. But there is many other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Trans about like like there's a beautiful herb in Ayurveda called Shatavari. I love such a powerful herb. Which the other name for that is a hundred husbands. Wow. <laughs> well, because you're you get <laughs> such a Shatavari. libido. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay, I love that. <laughs> So that's, that's your herb that you yeah. need to start using to that time. I see. Which is going to create the estrogen, which is going to create the libido, because it's going to create the wetness. Yeah. Uh, so it's not so dry. Mm -hmm. There is the Vidari can, that is another beautiful herb that mm -hmm. you use with Shatavari. Wow. That is also going to support that part of mm -hmm. your life in that time. Absolutely. So detoxing yourself from all the things that you've done mm -hmm. through all this time to get into that mm -hmm. situation that the pita is so high because I have other people that go into menopause and they maybe got one or two yeah. or three times of changes and didn't take Very anything balanced. else yeah. and that was it and that so the it. Pachacarma is just incredibly medicinal for this time to help cool everything, detoxify everything, and then understand the lifestyle to support it during that time. Yes. What would be, in a nutshell, your quick tips for anybody who's past that phase in their life, both men and women, to really go into the second phase of being wise, you know, and just going and aging essentially past that point to nourish them? Like your top tips that you love for men and women. Again, mm -hmm. I will talk about because of the media mm -hmm. and the internet and the phones and all this stuff, just remember it's your drying time of life mm -hmm. to try to be more aware of all this influence and moving fast and doing things more slowly and taking time to be with your family. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. Now you go home and then you continue. Like you, I've seen people when I go for dinner, they take their phone and then just put it there. Yeah. Or kids. Or the TV or all the things. Yeah. All the time. It's the phone and the media and the looking at the internet mm -hmm. or anytime you see it. The other day I was in a meeting and there were like five or six people. Last night I was in a class. Mm -hmm. The minute there was the break, mm -hmm. everybody went on the phone. Nobody connecting. Nobody just like talked to yeah. each other. It's wild. Everybody it's... was in the phone and it looking is... at the story on Instagram. Epidemic. So we are forgetting this. Mm -hmm. And this is going to cut kept up in all of us. What do you predict the negative effects are going to be? I mean, I even see it from just a neuroscience, like neuroplasticity, how our brain's shifting and our attention spans are shifting, our lack of connections even capable at this point. I can't even tune in and read a book fully anymore. I have to listen to it on Audible. It's crazy what's happening. Yeah. Is it, it is, first of all, what it does, the light of the phone on you. Yeah, and that's the first thing you do when you wake up. And that we're supposed to see the sun is the first thing we do when we wake up. And so it's this quick thing that's happening to our pineal gland and, you know, all of our brain chemistry that's saying, oh, you just slept for potentially eight hours. Well, now it's 12 p.m. in the afternoon, blue light. It yes. is so crazy. It's it crazy. Is. I was talking to one of my, the girls that work for me and she was just saying how difficult it is to that something is happening at one of the schools mm -hmm. here in LA. I don't want to say what school, mm -hmm. but the way that kids are bullying other, <gasps> other kids in a really brutal way. Oh, no. Brutal, brutal way. And using internet for that, like they take the picture of this girl and this girl had to leave the school because she couldn't Because of shame. It. And they stretch her in the mm -hmm. picture to make her look larger mm -hmm. and post pictures of her all over the school uh, so you see using technology mm -hmm. to do these things it's gonna affect the kids mm -hmm. uh, and i wish computers and phones they will not be allowed for kids until they are 15 mm, i love that or only certain time so yeah. they're still being this age and they can communicate and stuff mm -hmm. but not to Constant. have them at all this should not be allowed i agree it's it so... should not be allowed to buy to have you go to a restaurant and you see a kid, the parents are talking and the kid is in the computer I playing know. some kind of game. And even just from a nervous system and hormonal perspective of what's the chemistry. It changes every system in your body. Every system. It's crazy. Even our light, I think it penetrates, is it 30 millimeters? The blue light penetrates so into our thyroid. It, so imagine the child's full endocrine system that's being developed right now. <clears throat> Not to mention their neural pathways, their um, attention span, what they're perceiving to be reality. I know it's such 
such a it's such a conflicting time. We just don't appreciate what we have. I know. This body. I know. It's so incredibly smart. Oh my gosh. And the things that happens into our body that mm-hmm. we take for granted. We you don't take for granted that your body is pre- is, is making right now um water I into know. your eyes and it's not something that you're making your body do it it's doing it automatically the, uh, involuntarily it's breathing for me right now it's detoxifying my liver in this very moment hopefully I mean there's a lot of pollution <laughs> sure. around and who knows what I'm putting into <laughs> yeah. it but, but it is so wild how we, we really take that for granted it, I absolutely agree no it is it's like uh, another example is like if you get into a shock right now mm-hmm. your body will go into the sympathetic trauma yeah yeah Apparently. and then the parasympathetic system in yeah. our body it's just so incredible it's incredible it's, it's so just, incredible. and then we take this for granted we need to take care of this and if we continue bombarding it with this mm-hmm. we are going to be in big trouble So I'm quickly interrupting this episode to invite you if you're ready to start your manifestation journey or if anything you've heard in our manifestation episodes has piqued your interest to begin. We have a la carte workshops in everything from the basics bundle, which is what we recommend to everyone who starts. It's the formula that actually teaches you how to manifest, unblocked inner child and unblocked shadow. We also have a la carte workshops on love and money. But the real gem is the Pathway membership because it encompasses every single workshop we have. It's a year-long membership with full access to the few a la carte offerings we have and exclusive workshops not available anywhere else, such as the daily practice, which is what everybody in the Pathway uses, hopefully at least three times a week to daily in order to truly create the new neural pathways that one needs in order to manifest and houses the library of our deep imaginings, which is our unique hypnosis process that allows you to get into your subconscious and overwrite those old neural pathways, creating the new ones. You can use our special code EXPANDED, all caps, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D, to receive $20 off your first a la carte workshop purchase or $20 off your first month of the pathway. Again, that's all caps, EXPANDED, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D. Okay, now back to the episode. On the child front, to prepare the conscious parent, what are your biggest tips for somebody who's dealing with infertility? And then I'm going to rotate into postpartum, but I want to hear that. Preparing for pregnancy and dealing with infertility. Ayurveda is so beautiful in this because I've done it with some clients where we actually prepare, you know, how you prepare the baby's room and then you go and paint the room and have the crib and then you have the blanket and all those the baby doesn't use them. Mm-hmm. None of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really, you go through all these, and the baby is just going to be next in the village. To you. It's going to sleep next to you. You're going to wrap it around you. It's going to eat off of you. It literally needs nothing. <laughs> I mean, ish. You know, in the modern world, it's tricky. But I agree. I see that all the time. I agree. Yeah. But preparing for for pregnancy. So I have these these couples where actually I was saying preparing the room, prepare the womb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead yeah. of preparing the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more important more yeah. important because yeah, for the this is going to be the room for the baby yeah 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 mm-hmm. so very important to prepare yourself to be pregnant so uh we we've, we've done it where we prepare the mom and the dad mm-hmm. because yeah, this so, is not just only the mom i know nobody talks about the preparing the father so i want to hear both uh, because if i am going to make a baby you need to yeah. you need the seed the, the seed and the, the two seeds yeah you need these two seeds yeah. to get together yeah. to make a baby yeah and the the soil S- and the mom that's the room preparing that's the, the room, room. <laughs> so if you have this egg and this egg is full of heat and vata and pita and kapha and it's not a balanced egg yeah when the sperm comes that is also not mm-hmm. let's say it goes this is not going to be balanced. Mm-hmm. What are we going to make? So if the mom prepares and clean and detox herself and clean the, the womb and the room for the baby, you are 
and the dad does the same thing where it doesn't have all this aggravation in their body. The seed that is, these two seeds are coming. They are consciousness. Mm -hmm. They are already, already planned to be a conscious living being that mm-hmm. is going to be on earth. Mm-hmm. And traditional, all traditional cultures really shared this in common that they really prepared. I mean, across, you know, Weston Price was the really big one to go and study that from every indigenous culture that still was pretty untouched all around the world. Most, I think all actually prepared both the, the mother and father they prepared it like you do with farming and consciousness and spirituality to really, really set up uh, not only consciousness, but for health, for, I mean, everything to space out so that the mom would be replenished enough again for the second birth of choosing that. So it's so important um, with Ayurveda, you have such strong, beautiful practices around that. So when... I've done it where the, like the, the person that I'm thinking is just so beautiful because when I met her, she was already pregnant mm-hmm. and she had the baby. And then for the second one, they both see Pancha Karma mm-hmm. and they both, and then I said, okay, let's let, let the first period to not try to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then in the second period, then we try. So she did that. She got pregnant right away. Wow. She said, it's amazing to see the difference between how the pregnancy on one and the other one and how the delivery of one of the other one wow. was so yeah. different. Wow. And it's just because you prepare, you ate the right food, they, they, they feed the baby the right food. It's just incredible. Remarkable. And then taking care of to pregnancy too. And truly just going back to what we traditionally all did before. Yeah. <laughs> before there were so many um, exterior influences going on in such a busy life in such a modern world. Um, I love that. Yeah. And you see nowadays, I've seen it more and more. People are starting to look for the old ways mm-hmm. of healing yourself. The old ways of, oh, this, this was the way my grandmother used to do this. Yeah. And I'm starting to hear more of this now, mm-hmm. to go the old ways to do things. Absolutely. And when you had your children, did you practice both old ways? Because Colombia is so rich with the 40 days, right? Yeah, I did with both of them. Forty you days did. of for the forty days, and I have someone that's the the that's what we do the mother baby program yeah. where we go to the mom's house for the first forty days, and we cook for them, mm-hmm. and we do the abhyanga, and we teach the mom and the dad how to do the abhyanga on the baby. Oh, so how to do the massage on the baby. Oh. So this baby, my babies, my kids, they both got. Massage for the first 18 months of their lives. Wow. And my son had like a little skin condition because uh-huh. when he was being born, the nurse was, I wanted to have it in, in a birthing center uh-huh. that they were starting to come to the birthing center. Yeah, at wow. That point. Just then. Uh, but then one or two or three babies died and then the, they closed the birthing center yeah. where I was going. So I had to go to the hospital. Yeah. But when my son was about to be born, uh, I um, I went to the hospital. They put all the monitors and everything. And then I turned around and I felt him come. Mm, I felt wow. him going. Do you have kids? No. Okay. No, I can't get pregnant. For like, we have to come do Pachacarma. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, when the baby, I felt him going down. And the nurse was like, no, don't worry. It's the cervix. I just push the cervix. Do not push the baby because it's going to hurt his head mm-hmm. with the cervix. I'm like, no, the baby is there. Yeah. And she will not believe me. And he was your first? And the second one. Oh, so you knew, really knew. You had been through it, yeah. So I had to scream at her to look because I felt it. Yeah, yeah. She opened and then looked. Sees the head. The the head was out. Yeah. And she was like, do not push. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, what? Yeah. (laughs) Like, the most natural thing yeah. <laughs> because there was no doctor my doctor wasn't there so you, the nurses are not allowed to deliver a baby wow so they went and woke up a doctor in the meantime I'm like We're holding like because there was no one to deliver my baby wow so finally when the doctor I just couldn't hold it anymore yeah. and then just push the water went to his lungs <gasps> oh. so this affected his lungs yeah uh, luckily, I know Ayurveda, and yeah. I was I had a real remedy that I did for him Great. after to take out all the, the fluid. congestion. Yeah. And it was it was an amazing experience wow. doing that and experiencing that of 
having the knowledge that I have to apply it in my son. That's uh, why I feel like every parent, aunt, grandma, grandfather, whomever should at least teach themselves basic herbal medicine or reteach themselves. It's the stuff we know ancestrally, but even the simplicity of like, I mean, I, I'm an herbalist Western and I know a bit of Ayurveda and I study TCM, but it's like, even just when you get a cut, you don't need a Band-Aid always. You can just stick some cinnamon in and stop the bleeding. And then you use some lavender to clean it out. You know, there's so many, what's in our bathroom that we can use of essential oils to just Like Sangre de dragón, de dragón or yeah. Dragon's Blood. It's really amazing. Totally. You put it and it just like... That's it. Stops it. There's no scarring. The inflammation goes away. The bacteria. I just, that's why I like, I always encourage just go pick up the most basic herbal knowledge book um, for your household. Because not only is it so important, but it really is the cleanest way out there. So I love that you knew that. As a mom, that you could do that for your son is so special. And it also takes the control back into our hands for the most part. And it's the cheapest thing possible (laughs) is to have the knowledge. Talk to me. Like, yeah. like you were doing this, that remind me one of the things after having the babies. Bind yourself. Yeah. Put all your organs back yep. together and protect them. Don't be lazy. Don't go like, oh, I like that thing. No, it is so amazing what it will do to your body. It will put your body back to totally. where it was before yeah. you had the baby and it will protect all your main organs and the intestines and your, your uterus yeah. and your and bladder. And it places them all back. Back and in place. And it helps them put the back. It's just so really The most really ancient. Because you were like this. Yeah. Now all this is gone. So now there's space or yeah. it's vata, so it's movement. So if you hold it back again, uh, some moms are lazy to do that. And it's just so important. That mm-hmm. little thing, mm-hmm. it just already makes such a, such a difference. And uh, so explain to us what everything that's entailed in the mommy, the mom and baby program that you guys have. Oh, so we spot. go to your house mm-hmm. and then we'll give you a massage mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea to do it for the first 40 days. So most moms do it for like six days a week or some people can not, not do it six days. So they do it three days or two days. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is... Um, and then we cook for the mom. So then like the idea is that the mom is the most peaceful because mm-hmm. your body went to an immense war. amount of work. <laughs> to, or for to that's what it is for your nervous system. It's make so... Make all this happen. And one of the beautiful things that, that you see with the moms is like, do you know what the linea negra is? No. When you get pregnant, there is this black line. Oh yeah, the one from your belly. The linea goes negra. Yeah. That it just goes... And it, and it stays there all through your pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And it stays there to your 40 days. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Wow. At the 40 day, like around 36, it starts to disappear. Wow. And it disappears. Wow. It's, it's very magical. So it's just like the moon, following the moon. It, it's it's uh, communicating to us. Yeah. Wow. So then we go and give the massage to the ba- to the mom. We don't do anything with the baby. We teach the mom and dad how to do it with the baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we teach them and we teach them how to do the abhyanga mm-hmm. on the baby, which is the touching part for the babies at that point. This mm-hmm. is very, very important mm-hmm. uh, because it helps with the nervous system and then developing. And then we teach them how to do the exercises to develop the right side and the left side of the brain for the baby. So there will be later coordination. Mm-hmm. Then, so we'll teach them how that's the mother baby program. I love and then that. Then we teach them what are the foods that to eat the first week the second week the third week and the fourth week oh such a like beautiful thing to have that resource available here i love that okay i'm going to ask you a couple of quick questions from the people that we put it out on instagram they wanted to know stuff um some of them are quite basic so i just encourage people to go and just uh, google a few of them but i'm going to ask some that are kind of uh, not known so are piercings toxic piercing yeah even energetically, what that does to the body. Well, now that nowadays we have, again, technology, we can find out that if we pierce a point right here in the ear or pierce here or in the tongue that mm-hmm. I've seen, uh, and I've seen people that actually learn after that this point is your heart. In <laughs> Yeah, it's all your marmas or your different meridians. So you're, you're literally blocking. Because like I even have major adrenal issues and I used to have... Should have listened to my parents on all of the things, but I had a belly button piercing, which is your adrenal point right there. So yes. it's like, hello, it's not crazy. So if you're going to, and the same thing with the tattoos. Mm-hmm. So I will, I'll see it in the same kind of 
kind of thing. Because if you see how the dermis, so this the skin works, is that all that ink is toxic for mm-hmm. the body. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's no like, it is toxic for no the body. Around, yeah. And then what happens after the layers, it just goes into the blood and just goes everywhere. Yeah. So before you do any piercing, just make sure that what you're piercing is not a major point yeah. like you said in your stomach is the adrenals because yeah I'm young and not you feel that like Man, I'm young, when we're young nothing nothing's gonna wrong. happen to me <laughs> she's like I, I am like invincible invincible yeah and no this will you will see it later Absolutely. it's like the same thing with the moms that they don't take care of them the 40 days mm-hmm. yeah you're young you're fine but think about it when you get to menopause. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then you're going to pay for it. That's what each, like uh, uh, Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, they're like, the 40 days aren't important for now. Right after the birth, it's all for everything in the future. And they're right. important for that too, because it, that's when all this happens. Yeah. Like all the organs and everything comes back to work in a, in a normal way. So yeah. in the way they should be. Not if you go and, for example, going up and down the steps when you just right. had a baby. Right. Just the movement, the pelvic of that. floor, it's everything. The pelvic oh floor. man! Okay, uh, we learned how you study to be an Ayurvedic practitioner. We've answered quite a bit of these. <laughs> this is actually a good one because I think a lot of people have a few of these removed. If you've had your kidney appendix or gallbladder removed, what does Ayurveda have to say about that? Obviously, I had, for instance, I had an appendectomy, totally not knowing. I think this was about four or five years ago, and a lot of my illness stuff started after that. And when I went to see any of my natural doctors after, I just didn't know any better. They said, yeah, we're not supposed to take any organs out of the body. <laughs> They're all there for a reason, even though modern medicine doesn't you know, quite believe that scientifically. What does Ayurveda have to well, say? Well, but it's also the fear. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in your case, appendectomy, you have appendicitis. The pain is really unbearable. I mean, it's, to the point where you throw up, it's so unbearable. Yeah. So at that point, let's say you are my daughter and you have this and I don't have the knowledge that I have. And then here's a doctor and tells you, is this not operated right now? It's going to turn into peritonitis. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm yeah, saying bur- it right. Yeah, burst and it's your whole body, and you know, which is a potential, but... In the Spanish, it's peritonitis, but yeah. in, in English, I think it's peritonitis. It's the same thing. So it's going to burst. And if this bursts, your daughter's going to die. Yeah. So <laughs> what are you going to do? It's true, it's true yeah. You, you, you go and do it yeah. because you, there is no other option. And you don't know any, any other uh, steps leading up to that, what you can do within your power. I actually know a friend. This is a, a true story. Um, he had appendicitis. He, they said, they told him, you have to be operated right now. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the same story that I just told. And he said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going to go home and I'm going to go rest. And I'm going to change this. Guess what? He went home. Yeah. With his mind, mm-hmm. with the diet, mm-hmm. with laying down, he changed it. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have yeah, to Yeah, I mean, it's essentially surgery. a bacterial infection that's going on. So it's kind of like, even if you're at the... I, I do actually just want to tell people this is a possibility because I do wish somebody had told me this as well. Even if you're at the point of being in the ER and it's so bad, you just realize you can get antibiotics. I personally haven't taken any in eight years. Like, you know, I'm not a proponent, but you can do that and then go traditionally build your body back up as well. If you're at that like near point where it looks like it's going to erupt, I just like people to know that there's so many stages you can do before you have to have a removal just to make you an example of that it just happened within the last two weeks i have this girl that came and then she had a uti Mm -hmm. we talk on the phone you had a uti you gotta come and get the herbs now yeah 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 no you do you cannot wait it just grows oh i'll go tomorrow yeah yeah. no 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 there's so much you can insist please come and get them now i'm so much pain i know i don't want to go and uh, i'll get them tomorrow so she got in tomorrow. Tomorrow is too late. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not that it's too late, but it was too late in this case yeah. to be able for the herbs to work totally. in a better way. Anyway, she went to took the herbs and another girl that lives with her, the same thing happened, mm-hmm. had a UTI. So she her got worse, had to go to the hospital. Then she had to have antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Then my herbs, she gave it to her friend. Mm-hmm. But now the antibiotics didn't work, then the, it came back. Yeah. And now her kidneys are really hurting. <gasps> yeah. Then she called me and I said, 
you gotta come now. Yeah. I'd say, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> they learned. I will speak to mine as well because I've only had one ever and it was actually when I first started dating my fiance. So it was like, you know, sexual. That's how it, I'm like, what did you do to me? I've never had this. What's going on? And so I didn't know what to do and I asked all of my friends and that uh, I went and I, I did the antibiotic route and uh, came back right away, of course, because nothing in the bacteria had been and then it wiped out all of my bacteria. And then we talked to his, he has a medical intuitive he works with and just use like very high percentage of D-manos to keep the bacteria getting out and then used all like the cranberry? herbs. cranberry? Yeah, cranberry, yeah, exactly. And then it's, corn I've never silk. had another one since. Take a corn? Yes. Take the silk, make a tea, drink, drink it. it. Exactly. So Things just, we have in their house, it's not like it have to be very expensive. I agree. Yeah. So I just want to expand anybody who might be in those situations that... So, Again, it's just empowering the knowledge because when you are at the hospital or you are with a doctor who um, isn't familiar with these practices, there are uh, steps you can take beforehand if you have the common knowledge. And do you have any recommendations of herbal books that your favorite Ayurvedic books or resources for people who can't make it to Los Angeles um, that you suggest that can teach just very basic herbal knowledge? There is a, there is a book that I actually carried at, at Surya oh, and... Great. and uh, <clears throat> it's not on herbs, but it's more to understand all the different things that we do in Ayurveda. The nasya, mm -hmm. like the nasya, I don't know if you know what nasya is. No, it's nasya a is something thing? that that we do is that we put yeah, it's the, a whole treatment okay, itself. Okay. But the nasya is just the, it's just the drops oh. of oil that you put in your nose. Wow. So I make one that is with brahmi, yeah, or more known go to cola, yeah. So the. I use them every time I go into a play. Mm. Or I use, I, there's many different ones. But in, in my, uh, one of the things that I use it the most, I go in the plane, I put it. Mm -hmm. Because what? In the plane, you yeah. are with everything. You put the oil in your nose. Nothing's coming through. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. You don't get sick. Yeah. In the middle of the plane, if you go to Europe, it's too, too long. Yeah. You apply the drops again. Mm -hmm. And what these drops do to your body? Mm -hmm. Not only protects you from that but brahmi is an amazing herb yeah. for the brain so it lubricates goes to the to go, goes to the brain it actually lubricates and has the property of helping with your memory yeah psychic i try we try to drink it when we can before meetings like yeah. uh, i forgot it yesterday for our editorial meeting but it opens up your pineal gland too so you get all the downloads yeah. i love that so herb. this book is uh, uh is ayurveda mm -hmm. by dr lad ah great. lad it's a red one, very, not very expensive. And it has all the different treatments. It has all the pictures of the nails or the tongue and the tongue where, like, wow. where here's the intestines, here's the heart, here's the thyroid, here's the lungs. Uh, it has different little remedies. It has all the different vata pita kapha yeah. diets, all the vegetables. It's, it's, it's a very simple little book and it has different remedies for that and who was and, the author again dr lad lad okay. basant lad i don't have that uh, one that sounds like an amazing it's really amazing introduction really really amazing book it's okay. like very complete and it's like i said to you it's not and it's fun to read it is it okay is, you read it in like fast and and then if you have something you're like oh uh, I think I read this and maybe I'd try this and you try it and it's just like so it's so I, I already so, uh, it's like really effective it's so things. magical um, and this will be the last one I ask from everybody but what are Vedic rituals can we all incorporate into our lives you know actually I want to ask one question before that for the men who are tuning in, uh, I really want to support them because even, you know, Kate, who works with us, who used to be, you know, working, that's who luckily introduced us to you because I've been dying to meet you forever, but said that you have just as equal men clients as you do women. What are some of your top, if you're speaking to them that are listening, what are your top things that you would like to say to them? Because I feel like this has been so nurturing for women. Yeah, we, we, we do have a lot of men that come to Syria mainly women, because mm -hmm. women are more conscious about their bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, for the men, abhyanga, mm -hmm. again, just like do the massage every day. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. You do it, you go in the shower, and then you continue with your day. Yeah. Men, I would think, is more influenced by, again, computers than women. Mm -hmm. Women too, I'm not saying not, but I think men is more, mm -hmm. because they are more more like men. More, yeah. like, it's more like a... The masculine. A masculine, yeah. a feminine, that... Uh, uh, I will tell men 
that I don't think men are as conscious as about using products with all the amount of chemicals. Mm-hmm. That women are more more aware of it. Mm-hmm. But men should be aware of it too. Absolutely. Uh, they think there's more like a woman thing to do. No, men need to be aware of that too. Yeah, especially men preparing also for pregnancy as well. Yeah, because it's an endocrine for system. But, but not even if it's not a pregnancy, yeah. just using a deodorant yeah. with all those kind of chemicals. Here's your lymph glands. I know it's going to go inside your body. So yeah. just be aware of not perfumes and all these things that affect our bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and men are not aware of that. Not as much. Yeah, I agree. Now, last but not least, what are Vedic rituals can we all incorporate into our lives? The top ones that you think everybody should be doing across the board. Uh, The first thing in the morning that I recommend to everyone to do is scrape your tongue. Yeah, always. Not a day goes by. (laughs) I can't. Otherwise, it's just gross now. I've been doing it for so long. If you let the bacteria sit, it's kind of gross to me now. That's, again, another magical thing about your body is like whatever it is that you ate, not good for you, that the toxins brings it back to your tongue. Yeah. And if you don't clean them every day, you're going to put, put them back, back into your body. Yeah. So Ayurveda talks about uh, that, talks about cleaning your eyes with cold water. Mm-hmm. But now you have to be careful with the water, just use purified water. Yeah, <laughs> um, That's one. The other thing is drinking water in the morning mm-hmm. before you start your day. And warm water will be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, than cold water. Don't Ayurveda is very big, or, or, and I think TCM is also not warm. to drink cold water because yeah. it's not good for your digestion. The Abhyanga massage to, to uh, going to sleep before you go to sleep to bring all the day and to sleep better. Massage your feet with ghee. Ah, oh, that's a good one. It's I don't so do that. Beautiful the way you sleep and the way you wow. feel when you, just before you go to sleep, you massage your feet under your feet on top of the food and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. It's really that really that really thing. And try not to have come back to reading, not yeah. having the computer and saying you know before you go to to bed or my new rule is the sun goes down, computers off, sun goes up until the sun goes up, and I look at the sun. We've been working a lot lately, so I haven't been doing it, but I don't I look at the sun before I open any electronics, and once the sun's down, electronics are off just because of the brain chemistry and hormones alone. Yeah, but those little things, it helps the body so much. Yeah, so it, much. To be with the circadian rhythm of the world. Of, of the, the world, sun. of the sun. Well, we have Kate here too, who used to work so closely with Marta. What do you think our community needs to know that you know about that's just so cool? At least one or two things. Yeah, you can come in. Yeah, come on in. Because <laughs> I don't want anybody to Literally, miss. this woman is magical. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you need to know. <laughs> and then we'll finish off with the okay, last few. Anything you think that will really support um, everybody in the community since you were there? She is pure magic. And I think even if you're not into wellness, still do it. Mm-hmm. Like still go see Marta or see like an Ayurvedic practitioner because... I've seen how it's helped like people in my family who are not wellness people at Minnesota. all. Minnesota. Yeah. Totally. I mean like, <laughs> like that's like potatoes. Corn, yeah. corn state, you know. And um actually my grandparents came and did panchakarma wow. and it was the most incredible thing. What I've were the ever benefits seen. for them? They looked like 15 years younger. Yeah, he wasn't walking. Yeah. Wow, so he was able to walk after. I mean it that's was, incredible. So incredible. So wow. it's like truly life changing. And for, I wasn't sleeping when I first, like, I slept like two hours a night when I was wow. first seeing her, and she's amazing. And for the wise, the masculine, since we're really going to start speaking, and the parents, what are the, the ones that each one of those need to know about um, for Marta? Um, <laughs> well, for the wise, I think it's, it's not too late to start, is the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Like, um, just seeing how it has helped my grandparents has made me realize like they're in their Mm eighties and it is so not too late to start. Um, so don't feel, I think Ayurveda feels very overwhelming to some people, you know? Um, and I think just do the small things and start there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for the masculine, once again, like it's not a girly thing mm-hmm. and it's not just for women in wellness. Mm-hmm. So I love it's powerful. That. Any of the tips that you picked up that you watched while you were there for the masculine that you think are, are must be known. 
Hmm. I think one of the ones that um, is really interesting in like my body when I feel like I'm too in the masculine doing um, oil on my head, mm. like a sesame oil, like a brahmi oil is so incredible. It is. Don't that is think? magic what yeah. that does to the body. Absolutely. Yeah. And oh, and the nose. ears. That's incredible. Yeah. To calm everything. Wow. Marta, get back in yeah, here. We'll get, we'll get her back in to finish it out. Thank you so much, Kate. All right. And then last but not least, I want to hear about, tell us about the bread. Tell us about where we can find you. I want everybody to know where to come in and connect. Well, the bread. Oh, the bread started because nowadays I pretty much recommend everyone to not eat any wheat. Yeah. Because it's, no matter so what, it's genetically modified. Yeah. And it will affect your brain. And it will affect your stomach. I have so many people with incredible stomach issues. Young people. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about people from 20 to 30. Man. More than a handful. Wow. Where their lining of the stomach is basically not there. Wow. And a lot of leaky gut and colitis. and Yeah. So I said, I have to create something that I want to eat myself too for breakfast because I'm not going to be able to to have the bread, which mm-hmm. is something that even from the Bible, yeah. the bread was like created to be eaten Sacred. and now we cannot eat it. Yeah. And I understand it's delicious and there's nothing wrong with wheat. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go to Europe, eat yeah. wheat. There's wheat. no problem. No, yeah, no problem. Just, we I all don't. talk about that. You know, Lila just got back from the Ukraine and she has celiac and she's like, it doesn't bother me. And Europe, it's exactly what you're saying. It's not bastardized. It's, it's like... So, I had to create something. So I I started like, okay, I'm going to start playing with making something. So I started making the bread at the house. And it was fun because I would go like, okay, okay, today I'm going to put Brazil nuts and macadamias and uh, pine nuts. And I will go to the farmer's market and I will get figs and blueberries and whatever it was in season. And and then I will put it with the almond almond flour and the coconut flour. And then I will bake the bread. And it was for the clients only and for my family. And then start being like, can I just buy one? Yeah. (laughs) Like, okay, but well, you can you can buy it. Yeah, I can make an extra one, and then uh, and could two, three. Where were some pine that were making eighteen twenty, and I just said, "This is can't. I, yeah, I cannot live like this, do this. <laughs> <laughs> and do this at the same time. It was too complicated to mm-hmm. continue doing it, and too expensive because the things that I was putting in was like such high ingredients yeah. and high ingredients. So like just like, and I will not feel good to charge someone 30 yeah. hours for the bread yeah. <laughs> uh, but the ingredients that were in there it was expensive so then I decided to my husband actually Roger help on this on on making it more commercial and then so we got a company that will bake it they, they had to change the recipe a little bit because the ingredients will not yeah will not be able to make it yeah. uh, so we changed the, the recipe a little bit and and now we're selling it at the farmer's market. Wow. Um, it's so funny because a lot of my friends will stay with me when they're from out of town. Ashley Niece is a good friend of mine. And I'll come and every time somebody's staying with me, I'll walk into the kitchen and the bread will be in there. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody will always have gone down to the Palisades and gotten the bread. Yeah. So we get it at the, you can get it at, at the, at our website, suraspa.com. Oh, yeah, anytime. Oh, fantastic. So anybody around the world? Any, yeah. We wow. have a way of packing it, put it the eyes. And, Great. And normally when, we, when it's out of state, we only, the, the Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So then it's enough time with the eyes to be safe for the yeah. bread. But if you order a Thursday, you have to wait until Monday or Tuesday okay, for us to, to, to send it. So, so much integrity. That's that. incredible. Yeah. So the one... Uh, so we have the farmer's market in the Palisades, the one in Santa Monica, and the one in Brentwood. Great. That's the bread there. And then Huckleberry, mm-hmm. the cafe. Have you been there? No. Oh my God, so good. Uh, uh, they are the same owners of Rossi Canyon. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Casilla. So wow. they have our bread there. Oh, wow. Well, so so do they buy- serve it? No. No, just they sell. They sell the bread. Okay. They sell the bread there. And we just actually... I think because my son got another friend of his. We started to try to get it to Erwan. Mm-hmm. So we just, this happened just with the last three days. Oh. Uh, 
they wanted to try the bread, so yeah. they are trying to see. And then if he, that works, then it will be in air wine also. Then it'll be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the mecca. Yeah. It, yeah, it'll get in for sure. Everybody loves this bread. Yeah. So right now, the programs you offer is Pachakarma, and yeah, Pachakarma. everybody comes and does a consultation with you, and they come, and yeah. you're the one who suggests exactly what they need. Yes, Excellent. and then how many days it should be doing. Okay. Normally, I recommend for people most of the time to do seven days. Yeah. So then it goes to the seven different tissues of the body. Amazing. So it's like you go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the tissues. That Panchakarma, then we do the mother baby, then we do the bread, and then we have all different products. Right now, I'm working on developing all these products that I have, yeah. that I have, you know, like if you wear a pre it for you, or I'd show you, oh, I have this oil like that the I use. Oil and, but I things. never... Yeah. sold it so right now because we're moving to more of a commercial spot mm-hmm. where uh, we're moving to the proper hotel on 7th street in wilshire oh wow so there are, we're going to have six rooms in there and we're going to do uh, like cooking classes yoga classes wow. ayurvedic classes talks with spiritual people that i'm dying to do wow. like bring mother baby Mo- Mo- mother mira you know mother mira no you have to meet her it's really good. she's here in la no, she's from. She lives in in Germany. Oh, she's from wow. India, but wow. she's such a beautiful soul. She really? just like looks at you and then does the chakti so through that. Wow, uh, does the transmission through the eyes. <gasps> it's really an amazing, amazing person. Wow. Yeah. So when will that be launched? Uh, the new space. The new space in October wow. of next year. Wow. That we should be there. So right now we're just like choosing the right paints because everything that is going to go be there. Uh, it's like we are probably putting this new thing that I found. It's like a stucco that it will not, this material that it actually comes from Mexico looks like stucco, mm-hmm. but there will not grow mold in there. <gasps> wow. Because and Wi Fi like probably like can't go living, through it. It's like a living wow. in your walls. It's amazing. That's incredible. So it, the way it produces acidity or, or the way I'm not exactly because we we're going to talk to them. So everything we're going to be in the in there is going to be totally in into, and we're going to probably make also some wellness rooms. Wow! Where the rooms are like going to have infrared sound as they're like the ones I have in Syria. Also, that they are heat by water, not by electricity. Was no EMF because no EMFs. That's wow. very important for people to know. Don't use electric blankets. That yeah. will or the car seats in yeah. the, when you go in the car and you turn the seats. So bad. It's like it's microwaving so bad for you. your private parts. Yeah. So so bad for you. Yeah. So very important to do that. And so we're we're moving in October there. Wow. Uh, so I'm preparing all the products because wow. now these things cannot be like so. Like we have these bath salts. Yeah, tell us about the bath. These bath salts are, uh, this is one bath, by I the know. way. <laughs> I know. So that's like, my kind what? of bath. You want me to put all this in a bath? <laughs> yeah. You put all that in a bath and inside there's this beautiful pouch with the different herbs. And so there's different kinds of baths. There's some for hormones. There's some for vata. There's some for pita. Um, there are some for muscles. Wow. And so inside there's this beautiful pouch that smells divine. Wow. Can I open it? Yes, of course, please. Yeah. The Frisha is really trying to come over on us here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my, when I do baths, they're pretty, uh, I don't skimp. Like I do a whole thing of magnesium flakes when I do one bath. <laughs> but yeah, it, and again, it's so how this is body kind of responds to the ocean. Like the yeah. ocean always have the same level of salt. Doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly. It's so the water. It, and, and it's how that is so good for you. So this one, which one is this one? It's the hormonal one. I want to This is very earthy. It smells like very... Oh, feminine. it does. It smells... Uh, what well, I'm recognizing some herbs in it. Very earthy. Yeah, what do you think is in there? And it also has that, oh, what's the one herb I'm smelling in it that's fantastic? Uh, Chatavari. Is that what it is? Root, that's what yeah. it is. Because it's like sweet but earthy at the same time. Yeah. So it's lovely. But a very, very, could go masculine, feminine, even though I know it's hormonal. It doesn't feel overly feminine. It feels yeah. more medicinal. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so then you take this and then just put it in, in water and boil it. And then after, put it in your bath. The infusion. And then and sometimes I take the bath and then actually take this and then yes. just just put it on my body yeah. while I'm in the, in the bath. So it's really, so it's, you get more out of yeah. it. And then after you throw it away and then that's it. That was your, be- that yeah. was your big medicinal bath. Yes. Yeah, you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and don't think that I'm crazy telling you to use all this because it's actually, uh, if I could put more, I will. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, it's, it's and people really, can get this anywhere as well, order from the site. You can order from the site right. or, or go to Surya, where we are right now at the Palisades. Fantastic. I'm so grateful to have you here. One last thing I want yeah. you to do, if you will. Um, I asked this of my friend, my meditation you know, teacher friend who's from Brazil, and she speaks Spanish. But I really love when I can, especially to other Colombian women or men, just letting them know in Spanish to the camera anything's possible that they want to manifest. Um, you're the product of it. So if you could tell them in Spanish, in your native language, like follow whatever you have to say to them to expand them. Okay. Um, en esta oportunidad quiero decirles que Ayurveda, así estemos más, esté más en Estados Unidos, también lo puedes conseguir en Colombia. Es súper importante aprender a meditar porque nos va a ayudar a poder eh, manejar el estrés en el que vivimos todos los días. Yo aprendí a meditar y fui al, al centro de meditación. En, hay centros de meditación por todo el mundo y en Colombia, en todos los estados, en todos los departamentos lo puedes conseguir. Simplemente vas y miras por tra meditación trascendental y ahí puedes... Eh, eh, ir al centro de meditación es muy lindo y realmente te cambia tu vida. En Ayurveda, simplemente hacerte una bianca. Si no tienes eh, aceite de ajonjolí, simplemente coge aceite de oliva, que es divino para la piel. Te lo pone, te pone la piel muy, muy suave. Eh, y la bianca es muy sencillo de hacer. Es simplemente eh, te haces... Eh, Cualquier parte que es una coyuntura, vas a hacer círculos en las coyunturas. Y en cualquier parte que es un músculo, haces para arriba y para abajo. O sea, este movimiento para arriba, estás moviendo las toxinas en el sistema linfático que van a salir antes de que se vayan dentro de los tejidos. Y realmente mira qué, 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 qué te estás poniendo en tu cuerpo, qué estás comiendo. Y, y en, especialmente en Latinoamérica, cuando no, todavía no estamos tan tóxicos como está en América, eh, disfruta, disfruta la belleza de frutas y de naturaleza que tenemos. Le estaba, estaba hablando al principio de que fui a Santa Marta y estuve a, arriba en las montañas, sierra, cerca de la sierra, y fui y conocí a un mamo que perfectamente divino me, me hizo ese, estos dos hilos. Y cuando estaba haciendo la ceremonia, poniéndonos en mi mano, me estaba diciendo que si él me ponía esto en mi, en mi, en mi muñeca, era para que tenía que prometerle que yo iba a cuidar la naturaleza, eh, iba a cuidar la tierra. Eh, y todos tenemos que hacer esto, tenemos que cuidar la tierra, tenemos que cuidar la naturaleza, o si no, vamos a perder esta belleza que tenemos. Y Colombia fue donde yo nací. Hay sitios muy lindos y Sudamérica todavía muy, muy lindos que todavía no, no ha llegado eh, el hombre a explotar. Tratemos de cuidarlos y de no dejar que se explote más. Wait, they got lucky and they got to hear how to do an avianga. <laughs> and yes, everybody, it's so important to meditate every day. But um, will you tell anybody also in English what you said um, of how to do avianga as well? So the avianga is what we do is that we, any place that is a joint, we do round circles. So like we're moving this, this, the toxins out of there and then we pull them to the, we'll go up and down, and then very important to do the lymphatic system too. So always not just only do here, do here too. When I'm doing it, I do it like this. Is that okay that yes, I do it? Yes, but to very important to do the this circles one? here. So, so like you're this. moving, because the joints are more, more complex. Yes. So there's more toxins that can get in there. Ah. So that's why you do circles. So like you're moving them. I do it like this, that's bad. No, no, there's nothing bad. <laughs> it's better that you do something than nothing. Yeah. But you do circles. Do circles, that's the idea. Do the ah. circular. The circular. Yeah, do the circular. And then you go up and down and then ah. circular. So uh, muscles up and down, joints around. Yes. And then you do your stomach mm -hmm. to clockwise. Yeah. So the way it goes, the digestion. Mm -hmm. And then your joints again here. The major joints, you go everything there, circle, and then you go up and down. The idea is doing it. So once you do it from the arms, mm -hmm. you go to, towards your heart and then the feet towards your heart. And spend sometimes your hands because here you can 
access all your organs. The same thing with your ears and, and the same thing with the, with the bottom of your feet. Yes. So very, oh. very important. So spend some time with that and then just take a shower. Yeah. And then just let the oil go deeper into your body. And, and it that helps detoxify. Detoxify. Yeah. Uh, but through the hot water also and makes the oil go deeper into the tissues and the oil if you cannot get an herbalized oil you can get it in the in the website yeah. uh, all the different oils the vata the pita and the kapha and if you think you are a combination of both you are a vata and a pita so which is cold and fiery you can combine two mm-hmm. bottles and you make a vata pita oil perfect oh yeah. I love that that's such a good <laughs> hack oh thank you so much You're Martha welcome. for being with us for sharing your wisdom for being so generous with your time and um, we're grateful and thank you for the bread I can't wait to eat it no, you're <laughs> we'll have it at our meeting <laughs> thank you no thank you yes and thank you everyone <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into the episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, we did. And in case you're not totally ready to join the pathway yet, I wanted to share a few of our free offerings that I'll often suggest to people as a little bit of a blueprint to get them started on their manifestation journey. The first place I like to direct people completely for free is the motivation. You can see it linked below or on our homepage as our testimony library. And it's categorized by different subjects, whether you're calling in career, money, love, wellness, and much more. When you're reading about a member's experience of what they manifested, you're actually seeing to believe and showing your subconscious that that very thing is possible for you. The second place I like to direct people is to the free clarity exercise, which is also linked below. In it, you get to try our own unique hypnosis process, learn about the science and some journaling prompts. And the best part about this, you'll get a tiny taste of what it's like to go into your hypnotic state, bring your subconscious forward and create new neural pathways while receiving clarity. And the third thing, if you haven't listened to it on this podcast yet, please go back to the episode titled Manifestation 101, where you'll learn the basics of neural manifestation to truly understand this process. So go ahead and check out those free resources, the motivation, the free clarity exercise, and the episode Manifestation 101, all linked below. And in an effort to make sure to have representation in this process series, go ahead and submit any process testimonials you have, especially to our LGBTQ plus community, our BIPOC, as well as the WISE, which is anyone in the community who is 45 and over. All right, we'll be back next week. <laughs>